This unit marks the beginning of what is widely considered to be the most challenging topic in Algebra 1. It is widely, I'm not saying everybody, not, the, not everybody fails it. We, we will take a test on Friday and there will be people on that test that will get 100% in a perfect paper. So it's not impossible, but it is widely considered to be the most challenging. So much so that I call this the other F word in math. Okay, it's fine. It's, it's not the F word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not the F word that Jonathan's thinking of. In the <laughs> limited vocabulary. Factoring. But, yeah, factoring would be uh, one, and then what's the other evil F word in math? Fraction. Fraction, yeah. So those are the two things that the children don't like. Uh, but yeah, factoring is just as evil. Okay. Um, I think there's two main reasons why students struggle with that. One, one more so than the other, but there, there's two things that I think contribute more than anything. Uh, no. One of them is that we, uh, we don't know our times tables. If, oh, what times tables? I learned that in third grade. Okay. And I hope you do, but I know that a lot of people don't. I still have trouble. You've, you've become so reliant on the calculator that you cannot perform single digit multiplication without the calculator. That's going to be a problem. It's not a deal breaker, but it, it's going to make your life a lot more difficult, and now time becomes more of an issue. Typically, I find that kids that are not strong with their time tables, it's just not going to go well, even with a calculator. Okay? Part of factoring is the ability to be given a number, like, I don't know, like, let's say uh, 48, and be able to say, hey, I know 48 is 1 times 48, it's 2 times 24, it is 3 times 16, it is 4 times 12, it is 6 times 8. Where you have to think of every combination of numbers that you can multiply to get something else. If you're strong with your time tables, that shouldn't be too big of an issue. Okay? But that's the biggest reason. The second reason, this is, this is, I think, more personal to me that I think in my observations, is I don't think the kids fully get a, a grasp of what they're doing. Not necessarily how to do it, because if, I mean, if you demonstrate something over and over and over again, maybe you might get the hang of how to do something, but in the grand scheme of things, they don't understand what they're doing. So I want to try to establish that today as well. It's going to be really boring to have to listen to, but I think it'll help you in the long run. So let's start with that. Let's look at this other word. Okay. What's another word for an expression? Feelings. Feelings. For a mathematical expression. It's definitely not an equation. Oh, true. So, um, one big difference. I mean, um, what, what does an equation have that an expression? Oh, an, an equal sign. An equal sign, yeah. If anything, an equation is two equal expressions. So it's definitely not an equation. But what other word that you would have been introduced to? Here. Though, maybe slightly, like there might be some subtle differences between the two. They're not exactly the same. But when, when we talk about factoring, if they don't use the word expression, if anything, this other word is what gets used more often. Um, very? I'll give you a clue. It starts with a P and ends with polynomial. Polynomial? Oh, no, no. It's a polynomial. Ooh, right? okay. What's a polynomial? I heard somebody say terms before. Yeah, it's one or more terms. Okay. Uh, specifically, what are we going to factor? Uh, well, we should be factoring two uh, through four terms, well, uh, polynomials with two terms, three terms, and four terms. But in the material that I've been given, um, I haven't seen any of these. So if, if later on, you know, I'm told that I have to teach you that, I will. But now we're going to focus just on two and three terms. If you look at the packet I gave you, I don't know why the table didn't come out. I tried doing a few different things. I could not get it to come out. But luckily, this is being broadcast. It's, it's going to be on YouTube. You have time to write it now, so you just fill in the rest of the table. because It's not going to fill itself in. Well, when see, I think part of the problem, no pun intended, is that you guys think of these as problem and answer. When it, when it comes to what you do in math, you guys don't think skill specific. You don't think of what skill you're doing. You just think of, oh, here they give me a problem and I must come up with an answer. Which is why I hear some people all the time say, well, yeah, you gotta solve, you gotta solve, you gotta solve. When we're not solving because we're not dealing with an equation. So, 
But let's assume that you do think in, in this pattern. With the math that you've encountered up to now, even going back to elementary school, before algebra, when you were just doing arithmetic, okay? What were you doing most of the time when you were given a problem? Assuming that there's no equal sign, assuming you're not solving. Basically, in other words, what, what, what are you used to doing with ex oh, I almost wrong with this thing. What are you used to doing with What are you used to doing with expressions? If you're given a, if, if I ask you, what do you do with an equation? Most of you would say solve. Yes, okay, good, equations get solved. Oh. What do you do with expressions? Find which um, number, like, what, the amount, like, no, simplify. That's an inequality. What the? What did you say, Rihanna? Simplify. Simplify, very good. Simplify. Okay. Case in point. Okay, so um, okay, so now algebra has variables. So let's say we say, hey, what is four times x minus three? This is an expression. There's no equal sign. We're not solving for x, but you guys are used to simplifying. You you're used to thinking that this is your problem, and then you must answer the problem. And what does that answer involve? Distribution. Distribution, oh. sure. So that's 4x minus 12, and bam, there's my answer. Well, yeah, what you did in order to get that answer was you simplified it. Today, what we're doing, factoring, generally speaking, is the opposite of simplifying. So, whereas you used to think of this as being the problem and you coming up with the answer, in this unit, this is going to be the problem, and this is going to be the, the answer. Hash brown TBT, we're going to take it back because it's Thursday. We're going to go backwards. Why did you put a hash brown? Because that's what the cool kids say. They say hash brown. That's just McDonald's fat. <laughs> So just, just try, to, try to visualize. Try to visualize that you're going backwards. What are we doing when we're, we're going factoring? You're going backwards. It's, and, and we can be more specific. There's, there's more specific examples. Like once we get into factoring methods, like the first method, that's only the, the only one that's universal, Jonathan, yeah. which is called greatest common factor, that is the exact opposite of distribution. When you're, when you're performing greatest common factor, you're going backwards distributive property. Instead of getting rid of a parenthesis, you're bringing one back. Other than that, in order to factor, we need to identify how many terms our expression has. In Algebra 1, we're normally responsible for factoring two terms, three terms, and four terms. But like I said, I haven't seen anything so far in my course materials that would tell me that I have to show you four terms. I haven't seen it on any of the assessments. But if we do, we'll deal with it at that time. So we're going to focus on two terms and three terms. If you have two terms, okay, once you're done checking for a greatest common factor, for now, for algebra one, later on there's other types, but for now, the only thing you're going to check for is a difference of squares. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay? If you have three terms, what you're looking for is a perfect square trinomial. Now, even though those are different methods, because one applies to two terms, one applies to three terms, there's actually similar similarities. The square in difference of squares stands for perfect square. Do we know what perfect squares yes. are? What? It's like um, 2 times 2 is 4. Oh my god! 4 is 12. No, 16. And then 16 times 16. 4 times 4 is 12. You said you No, I said 16. Mm. Danny, you want to try to give it a shot? No, it's good. No. You he, sure? He stole your thunder. Yeah. You'll never be the same. Yeah. A perfect square is a number that you can take the square root of without getting a decimal. Or you can kind of say, as Muhammad attempted, it's a number that comes out as a result of multiplying a number times itself. Some perfect squares are like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 80, 100, 121, 144, 169, 196, 225, uh, 256. You're very calm. You're very smart. You deserve a cookie. That's why I'm <laughs> That's why I have more friends than you. 
Because I know all my perfect squares. Because I keep my circle point. I keep my circle small. Ooh. I only have zero pieces. Small two times. Ooh, got two pieces. Ooh. 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 Um, now, well, the other thing that both of these have in common is that they're considered special cases, meaning uh, uh, they're shortcuts. If you can identify your expression as being either of these two, you should be able to factor by a shortcut, by just substitution, by plugging in. You'll plenty of examples to come. It'd be great if you've seen this before. It'd be great if you understand it. But if you don't, just try not to fall asleep. Right now, Kayla, that's why we're working on is not falling asleep. Then the most evil of all the factoring methods, the one that we're going to work on the most of all, the one that's going to give you nightmares, the one that requires you to know your time tables more than anything else, is a factor chart. What I'll tell you about that is I've seen these structured a variety of ways over the years. You can, oh, but I do it differently. My teacher taught me to do it differently. No, it's, it's the same thing. It's Doesn't just, matter. It's just you're arranging it differently on your paper. Okay? Uh, I used to fight kids and know you must do it the way you were taught, but if, if you're going to veer away from what I show you and do it a different way, you better be ready to support. You better be able to explain to me what it is you're doing and why it works. That's all I'm going to say. If you've attempted all these factory methods and nothing works, then your expression is said to be? Prime. Prime. Prime means that it can't be factored. If you're taking a multiple choice test, it might not say prime. It might say not factorable or something like that. Uh, it just means prime. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. Because what happens is now the kids, because they're half asleep or they're not doing what they're supposed to do and they get stuck and they don't know what to do next and I start seeing things turned in as prime, 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 prime. Not, not because the polynomials were prime. It's just because they didn't know what they were doing. Uh, you will see little, if any, expression that end up being prime. Of the problems that you will be given, I would be very, very worried if you get a prime. Does it mean that you can't? There are prime polynomials, but if you get something that you think is prime, I would double check it. It's probably not. I. I. You guys already messed up my bathroom pass, and it's only been a week. <laughs> yeah, well, when I run out, and then you guys can can't go to the bathroom anymore. Then that's bogus. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit more about these factory methods, right? The first one which is difference of squares that applies to two terms. If you have two terms after you've checked for a GCF, the greatest common factor, we want to check and see if potentially are two... Well, what's, another number, what's another name for a two-term polynomial? A binomial. Good. Thank you. For sure. Um, we want to check and see if our binomial is also a difference of squares. What does the word difference mean in math? Subtract. Subtract. So notice how you see subtraction? Mm -hmm. Okay. And if both of our numbers are perfect squares, which we already talked about perfect squares. I named a bunch of you to show you how cool I am. Uh, but another thing to be aware of, variables can also be involved in perfect squares. If I ask you, uh, if one of these terms ended up being 25x squared, what times itself gives you 25x squared? Five. Not just five. Five x times five x. Five x times five x is uh, 25x squared. So variables can be involved in difference of squares. I would have hoped you would have learned this before, but so far today, nobody claims that they have. I know earlier this year when I was at the other school, we went over this concept. But when you have a difference of squares, Okay, when you're in simplest form and you have a difference of squares, a difference of squares can be factored instantly. That's why this is a shortcut. As long as you see the difference, as long as you know you have perfect squares, it can always be factored as two binomials with the same terms on the inside, but where the only difference is the sign in the middle. That has a name. Its name is conjugates. So if I ever ask you what does a difference of squares look like in factored form, you would say conjugates. 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 Wait, so that, that's your answer? No, uh, once we haven't done any example, like any 
concrete yeah. examples yet, but we're, we're going to talk about this in the examples. Another shortcut is if you have a perfect square trinomial. <coughs> perfect square means the same thing it did up here, but now when you have a trinomial, three terms, there's a few more criteria that need to be satisfied. Those perfect squares that we had before would now be at the beginning and at the end. The perfect squares would have to be the first and last terms. It's a perfect square <laughs> yeah. Not only would they have to be perfect, they'd also have to be positive. If you have a trinomial where your first or last term are negative, can't be a perfect square trinomial. Okay. Now, there is a little bit of flexibility. Our middle term, whatever's in the middle, is allowed to both be positive and negative. That doesn't matter. But your first and last term have to be positive and perfect. Can you tell if terms are positive and perfect by just looking at them? Yeah. Yeah, you should be able to. You should not have to write anything. But now, unlike with difference of squares, that's not enough to prove you have a perfect square trinomial. There is one written test you have to do. And that would be, now the kids earlier today have told me that this they have heard of, so I'm hoping you've heard of it as well. But um, if you've ever seen it, I don't even need to write it, it's here. On that next page, this is called standard form of a quadratic polynomial. Have you seen this before? Yeah. AX squared plus BX plus C. A is the number in front of the x squared, B is the number in front of the x, and C is a constant. So if you go back and do that with your perfect square trinomial and you identify what is A, what is B, and what is C, the last test that would have to be true is that B squared would have to be equal to 4AC. Time goes by, you guys don't study, I do that test and kids go, but wait, I don't get it, where'd you get the 4 from? Or comes from the formula. If all of those things are true, and it seems like it takes forever, but it doesn't, it should take you like 15 seconds, then you can factor. If a difference of squares looks like conjugates in factored form, a perfect square trinomial looks like a repeated factor. Instead of two binomials, it's just one binomial with a square. It is just one binomial with a square. How do I know which binomial to put? Look at that middle sign. If the middle sign is positive here, the middle sign is positive there. If the middle sign is negative, the middle sign is negative. If you somewhat understand what I'm talking about, great. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, it's not the end of the day. Just make sure you don't fall asleep. Like, just try to pay attention. The hope is that once I show you examples, and there's plenty of them, but look at your packet. Ooh, examples. Um, then hopefully it will make more sense. The only other factory method we're going to discuss involves three terms. And what if none of the shortcuts work? What if we try the shortcuts, they don't work? Well, then we have to do what's called a factor chart. This is what I told you you may have learned. You know, but I know how to do that a different way. You don't. It just might look different, but it's not different. If you have already identified the values that are in the location, oh, now you froze on me. Oh dear. Jonathan, do your friends find you as funny as you find yourself? Yes, sir. <laughs> no, because you're not a friend. He's my friend, and he's funny. Mm -hmm. Leave me alone. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, like, they laugh at your jokes as much as you do? Of course. That's cool.
do it? I've been factoring all day. What have you been doing? Hmm? <laughs> I've just been mostly factoring all day. That's pretty cool. Okay, so um, if you have already identified A, B, and C, we're going to make a two-column table. The, the first column is a multiplication column. The second column is an addition column. You'll notice the word sum. What I want to do at the top of each column is at the top of the first column, I'm going to write AC. And I don't mean air conditioner. <laughs> In algebra, when you put two letters next to each other, what are you being asked to do? Multiply. Multiply. So I want to get whatever the A value and the C value are, and I'm going to write at the top of the first column. At the top of the second column, I'm going to just write whatever B is. Here's where that multiplication comes in for the times tables. Once you're done multiplying, now you have to think of every combination that you can use to get whatever number is at the top there. So like if the number that I have on the top is, uh, I don't know, 72, I have to know 1 times 7, uh, 72 is 72, but so is 2 times 36. So is 3 times 24. So is 4 times uh, 18. So is uh, it's, uh, 6 times 12. So is 8 times 9. You have to think of every, every like, and that's what you're going to list here. You're going to list pairs of numbers. Like one number, another, one number, another, one number, another. You're going to list pairs of numbers. You don't, you don't actually write a comma, but I'm just trying to show you. There's going to be two numbers there. Um, and all those pairs should multiply to give you whatever number to the top. The second part of this process is now to add all of those pairs to see which one matches B. What gives you the same as B? Exactly. You gotta wait to see which one you have. This now this can be a lengthy process. I've seen some tables that get really, really long. I used to force kids to write all the factors just to practice their times tables, but that was a different time, just a long, long, long time ago. Things have changed, so yeah, I mean, if, if you want to do most of this table mentally, that's fine, but at the very least, write the combination that works. And in order to help guide you in this process and maybe keep your table a little smaller, Papa Romero can take care of you and give you like a little cheat. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to help narrow your focus. We're going to look at signs. So let's think about this logically first so we see where this comes from. If in my first column I end up with a positive, the first column is a multiplication column. What are the only ways I can multiply two numbers and end up with a positive? Positive, positive, positive. That would be positive. The other one would be positive. Negative, positive. Negative, negative. Fine, negative, 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 negative also works. So if my two choices are positive, positive, because I'm looking for pairs of numbers. And if my two choices are positive, positive, negative, negative, but I know that at the same time, simultaneously, mismo momento, at the exact same time, those two numbers need to add up to a positive. If my only choices are positive, positive, and negative, negative, even though some kids still do think that two negatives add up to a positive, sadly, what is the only way that I can add up to a positive? And those are my only two choices. Positive, positive. positive. Two negatives will never add up to a positive. So when I have a positive number, number in my left column, when I have a positive number in my right column, all the, all the factors that I'm going to list are going to all be positive. If I have a positive number in my multiplication column for the second time in a row, what are the only times I can multiply and get a positive? What are the only ways I can multiply and get a positive? For the second time? With multiplication? Positive, positive, and negative, negative. But if at the same exact time I need to add and get a negative, have you ever seen two positives add up to a negative? No. no. Yes. No. 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 Oh, yes, sir. No. Um, <laughs> if I'm going to multiply two numbers and get a negative, what's the only way that can occur? One negative. 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 One negative.
If at the same time those two numbers where one has to be positive and one has to be negative have to add up to a positive, what's the only way that could occur? Well, negative positive. Wait. It's on the paper. Well, that's true. Sneaky morning. And then the last scenario, if you have a multiply to get a negative, but it adds up to a negative, small positive. Okay. So let's get, without further ado, let's bring in the example. So now this is the problem, because you might be looking at it, oh, look, there's no right term. But that's what you're trying to add. But we don't want to add. You want to go back and you want to factor. So we first identify how many terms do we see here? Three. We do see three terms. And in our problem, what's the first method we're going to try to use to factor three terms? If, if you guys remind me before tomorrow, I'll remember to put this on my notes. I'll print the notes out and I'll hand them to you. So then that way you'll know what, what I'm asking. Go ahead, Mohammed. GCF. Yeah, we're going to look to see if we have a GCF. So, look, GCF many times can be done mentally. But just to try to organize you, I would advise you, let's identify those A, B, and C values first. What value is in the A position? Uh, y. Y. No, not Y. Y. A 1. It's what's in front of the Y squared. There's a 1. When you don't see a number in front, there's a 1. What number is in the B position? 15. And what number is in the C position? 36. 36. So when you're looking for a GCF, the first thing you want to look for, just because people forget to do it, is actually first look for variables. I don't even worry about it. Look for variables. You might, well, no, that's, that's going to be so hard. No, it's not. Just do all three of those have a Y? Yeah. No. Oh, no. So guess what? So the, the variable, can, if there is a GCF, variable can't be part of it. Okay? The only thing you have to ask is, well, okay, now these three numbers that I wrote, do they have a common factor? Is there one single number that I can divide all three of those numbers by? Yes. What? Wait, no, 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 no. Oh, easy. Oh, yeah. Fine. Only one. Yeah. When, when A is one, you're not, you're not going to find one. So we're going to assume that this has no greatest common factor because Greatest, if greatest common factor is the opposite of distributing, and when you distribute, you multiply, well, to factor something out would be like dividing. And what's anything divided by 1? <coughs> what is any number divided by 1? The same no, the same number that you saw. So, like, nothing's so. going to change. So, I'm going to bypass greatest common factor. What's the next thing you were taught to look for? Uh, square, perfect square, perfect square trinomial. Square Even though okay. that took forever to explain and it was super, super boring, it really isn't. And it's going to be worth the 10 to 15 seconds of your life. Because if it does work, it saves you from a chart. And you want to do everything you can to avoid the chart because that takes longer. So what were the checks? Well, the first check was visual. Are the first and last term positive? Mm -hmm. Yes. Check. Are the first and last term perfect? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What times itself gives you y squared? One. Y squared. Why? I mean, y. y times y is y. One. One or square. Oh, that is a y zero. Zero. <laughs> okay. Is thirty six perfect? Yeah. My sister Are you all Caleb? Only on the weekends. What's that? His friends call him Caleb. Um. Yeah, it's six times six. So it is worth the little bit of our time. I don't know how, time, how long it took you to mentally check that. But it is worth our time to now check to see if b squared, which is 15 squared, is equal to 4, which comes from the formula, times a times c. Because if this is true, it's going to save us time. 15 squared is 225. 4 times 1 times 36 is 144. Are those two numbers equal? No. Oh, man. Okay, well, it didn't work. At least we tried. But it didn't work. If it would have worked, it would have saved us time. I got in the chart. 15 seconds of your life, they'll never get back. Yes, now you got in the chart. So here comes the chart. It's a two-column table. 
We're at the top of the first column. Eventually, I'm going to stop writing these letters in, but just so that you know what I'm writing here, is the first, the top of the first column is AC. What is A times C? Uh, AC. 36. 36. On the second column, you just put B. What's B? 50. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna just for a moment. I'm gonna ignore the signs. I know everything is positive here, so you're probably ignoring it anyways. But Jordan, we're gonna ignore signs, and we're gonna start off our table on the left side by thinking of all the numbers I can multiply to get 36. I like to work my way outside in. So like I start with the obvious, 1 and 36, then 2 and 18. If you have, if you can't do it in your head, you have a calculator to help you, go for it. So those are all the combos of numbers that I can multiply to get 36. This is where I came in with my cape to save the day. Superman. I don't like that what do you mean? What do you mean? Because I gave you a table that said, okay, look, because, I, mean, I, I mean, I might be confused with the signs, especially once negatives start coming in. So I gave you this table that said, all right, if my first column is positive, because I had a positive 36, if my second column is positive, because I had a positive 15, then what, fa what do my factors have to be, those combos, what do they have to be? Both positive. They have to both be positive. So I'm going to go back to my list, and I'm going to write positive, 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 positive. And the last question is, do any of those combinations add up to? 12 times 3. I mean 12 plus 15. Yeah, 3 plus 12 is 9. 3 and 12. 3 plus 12 is positive 15. Ding, 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 ding. The chart was successful. Thanks, chart. So that's hmm? No. I'm trying to factor. I'm trying to go backwards. So what we need to know is that every quadratic trinomial in factored form <coughs> is going to be two linear binomials. For the second time today, what's a binomial? Uh, two, 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 two. Two terms. Yeah. Two terms. So. Not, this is going to be the only problem I'm going to do this on, but just to give you something visual to try to, you know, imagine. Think of this and I have to fill in the blank. I'm going to put like little boxes. I have to put a box, a box, a box, a box. And the only thing that goes in between is, is the sign. Let's actually work backwards. Let's talk about what goes in the second box in each parenthesis. So we came up with those numbers. So what's going to go in the second box? The 3 and the 12. Because those were both positive, those are the signs you put in the middle. What goes in the first box? The variable and A unless A was 1. Because in this case A was 1, the variable was Y. What's 1 times Y? Y. Just Y. So just put Y. So now that we write it without all these visual aids, what is this polynomial in factored form? Y plus 3, Y plus 4. That's a 13. A 13. Oh, sorry. I said 3 though, right? Yeah. yeah. So Y plus 3, Y plus 4. We talked about how factoring is like going backwards. If, I, if, if this were your problem, and you wanted to get an answer, if you wanted to simplify this, you would FOIL, right? You have to combine like terms. Take a while, guess what you would get if you multiply y plus 3 times y plus 12? Hey. 23. Ooh. Y squared plus 25. 225. You'll get 225. You will get what you started. Ooh. So if you have enough time and you have nothing better to do with your life, do it. Multiply it enough. I have a question. Yeah, man. How do you know, like, what number goes in what box? At the end? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second box in each parentheses is always going to be the number that you got from the, from the table, which was 3 and 12. And the first box is always going to go whatever A was, which is 1, just attached to the, to the variable. <coughs> A was 1 at the top. The variable is y. What's 1y? 
put that's why I put Y and one twelve. So if those three then you will put three Y and then there's a couple extra steps to do. I don't want to worry about that when we get there. Yeah. I just want you to be aware of it. Yeah. So the thing in the parentheses that's the answer. Correct. This is factor form of that of that expression. It works the same thing, but this is just arranging it in factor form. This is up here at the top what you started with. This is synthesis form. They both work the same thing, and if you're not sure, you don't need me. Go to the bottom and follow that. See what you get. All right. Here you go. If you want to, it's up to you. It's your world. Okay. Here's the next one. You're showing off your bling? Yeah. Hey, go, mother. How many terms? Three. Okay, there are three terms. What do we try first to do to factor three terms? GCF. We'll try to see if there's a GCF first. So in order to see if there's a GCF, I want to identify A, B, and C. What is it? What is in the A position? One, one. Negative one. What's in the B? Three. What's in the C? Forty. Now, don't forget. It's very easy to forget. Part of GCF is looking at the variables too. But that's just real, you just look at it, it's real simple. Do all three of those have an X? Mm -hmm. No. No, the last one doesn't. The 40 doesn't have an X. So a variable cannot be part of this GCF. Okay? The next thing we look at are now the three numbers. Do negative 1, 3, and 40 have a greatest common factor? No. No. Nope. Kind of. Here's what I mean, kind of. Uh, what what number can you divide any number by? One. one. Now that one normally doesn't help us. But the thing is, if I'm going to go any further, i got to get rid of this. I cannot factor an expression where there's a negative in the front. So I'm going to kind of like artificially produce a GCF. Again, what can any number be divided by? One. One. But now if I only bring out a one, nothing's going to happen. But how about if I make that one negative? Whoa. If I were to divide every single one of these by negative one, what would happen out in front? I get a positive. So this is your first example of GCF. How many terms did I start with? Three. Three. How many terms am I going to end up with? Three. Still three. The difference is I'm going to factor out. I'm going to go backwards distributive property and factor out that negative one, which means I don't need the one, but I do need the negative one. And what's going to be left over on the inside, think about it, it's, it's what you would have had before you distributed to get what's up here. So like negative 1 times what gives you negative x squared? Or x squared. Or you can think of it as what's negative x squared divided by negative 1? That's x squared. Everything changes now. This becomes negative 3x, this becomes negative 4. Now that A is positive, I need to go back and identify A, B, and C. A is 1, B is negative 3, C is negative 40. And now, and now we can continue. Now we can commence. We've already checked GCF. What comes next for three terms? The, the factor. Wait, no, no. Trinomial. trinomial. Perfect square trinomial. But here, I don't have to go through all the trouble of looking at anything special because how do I know just by looking at this that this is not a GC, um, not a perfect square trinomial? The because the last, number is, the last number is negative. You can say the last, the, the last number is negative, which that's not allowed. They have to be positive. So that's, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough for a reason. I don't have to even worry about anything else. But maybe more was going to say also 40 is not perfect. I, either one of those are enough reasons. I don't get key. You want to get? Yeah. <laughs> Did you catch it? Okay, so, now, so all we have left to possibly try is the, uh, the chart. If the chart doesn't work, is this going to be prime? Yeah. No. Why not? Because the... I've already done something. Even though it wasn't much, what, what have I done? Artificially think the one. Yeah, I already had a GCF, so... I have a factor that just happened, you know. It wouldn't be prime. What is 1 times negative 40? Negative 40, what's B? Negative 3. Let's take a second and ignore the signs, and let's just think of... In the first column, we have a 40. What are all the combinations of numbers? Kayla, that we can multiply to get 40. 1 and 40, 2 and 20, 4 and 10, 5 and 8. Wait, 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 wait. Don't, doesn't that have to equal negative 40? Let's take a second and ignore the signs. That's where Papa Romero comes in to save the day. Okay. 
because we can make a lot of mistakes with science, but I'm going to help you with that. I got to study. Do you agree that each one of these combinations multiplies to give you 40? Yeah. Okay, so now we go back to the table I gave you and say, okay, both of the numbers at the top were negative, right? So I told you when both numbers at the, at the head of the column is negative, what are my factors going to be? Small, small plus positive big and big negative. Big small positive and big negative. So I come back over here and make all the little ones positive and make all the big ones negative. And that's going to help guide you to where you need to get to. Do any of those add up to give you negative 3? Yeah, the last one. The last one. Positive 5 minus 8 does give you negative 3. Then Edito says hit top parade. And then he knows that every quadratic trinomial is going to factor as two binomials. We know that what's going to come second is a plus 5 and a minus 8. What comes first? The variable potentially attached to the A, to whatever number was out in front. So Which after we brought that negative, what is 1x? One 1x. One X. It's just x, so that's what's going to go in front. But remember that this was only possible because we did that manufacturing. We artificially brought out that negative 1, so we have to account for that. That negative was already on the outside, so it needs to drop as if it was hot and stay on the outside. Very easy thing to forget. One more, one more quickie. The next one's super quick. The next one is going to take 30 seconds. <laughs> How many terms here? Two. 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 two terms. So I don't have to worry about the whole ABC thing, but what, what am I supposed to check for first when I have two terms? Yeah, greatest common factor. Do I have a greatest common factor here? Yeah, three. Three. Okay. If I started with two terms, don't pack up yet. I'm still going to have two terms. It's just that each one of those terms is going to be divided by 3. I went backwards distributive property. What is 3a squared divided by 3? 1. It's a squared. 3 times a squared is 3a squared. What is 9 divided by 3? Uh, 3. Okay, so I've already accomplished some type of factoring. If I were to distribute this, what would I end up with? I don't want to distribute it, but if I were to, I would get what I started with. That's why I don't want to do that. The question is, am I done? I know I'm not going to have a prime. Pardon me, because I factored something. Uh, am I done? Well, how many terms are left? Two. What, do we have another way of factoring two terms? <laughs> yes, it's called the difference of squares. I'm going to tell by looking at it that those two terms are not different squares. Because one is squared and one is not squared. There's no difference. Difference means subtraction, and I'm not subtracting. That's enough of a reason. Also, 3 is not a perfect square, so I'm done. What's the answer? The answer is what you see up there, 3 times a squared plus 3. I will continue tomorrow and hopefully introduce you to the equation.